I like this movie probably more than you, Rob. And I actually left it with a galaxy brain take and some resolution about an ongoing question that I've had since forever. But like, I think I put this question to Waypoint Radio a, a year plus ago when I was first oh. watching Clone Wars and was like, "Why is Palpatine like this?" Yeah. Um, and I have a I have an answer now that is not a that is not a lore answer, but is a the ways in which Lucas sees this this trilogy. Um, and it also helped me figure out where the tension is for me in this prequel trilogy. Um, and I don't know if I'm gonna like galaxy brain off the bat, but maybe I should just like dump lore dump this this take and that I'm, way I can I'm refer ready for to it. Throughout it. <laughs> so like, here, what do people know about Re- uh, Revenge of the Sith besides the plot? I-, I think the thing is it's filled with memes, right? There are, uh, and I don't know, Natalie, if this hit your, like, sub-generation of millennials, but in my generation of millennials, <sighs> this fucking thing is filled to the brim with stuff that people quote at each other a lot. Um, yeah. Ranging from, like, do it, to, like, unlimited <laughs> power, um, no. the I have the high ground. Yeah, if, if you were on You're the Man Now, dog, in oh. 2005, all you talked about was this movie for, like, the next six months. A hundred percent. The the Darth like, Vader like, no you heard like ten times a day. <laughs> the like um, this is where the fun starts. Yeah, uh, it's just filled with it. Uh, you were like a brother to me. All of that stuff. Um, and historically, or in the past, not historically, but in the in my past, I've thought about those as being like belly flop lines that are like mm. so goofy that they are bad. Um, but rewatching it, the thing that I think sticks with me. I'm trying to think about this movie versus Attack of the Clones and uh, 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 Phantom Menace, which both have meme lines in them. Also, the your your whatever I I hate sand. Uh, <laughs> uh, now this is pod racing, right? There are a couple, right? But not like this. This is just every fucking scene has some wild line that is super memorable in this way. Um, but is the th- is me, the line finish, okay? Go ahead. Let me finish my my galaxy brain take, which yeah. is. I think this is the closest Lucas gets in the prequel trilogy to approaching the legibility and memorability of the epics that he wants to, the epic, like, space he wants to work inside of. And when I say epic there, I mean the genre space of the poetic epic. Um, I'm talking about, like, Beowulf going to fight the dragon. Yeah, yeah, Darmok and Jalad from uh, from Star Trek uh, Next Generation. Prometheus stealing the fire. Lucifer falling into into hell, right? Like, these sorts of hyper-legible, super-memorable moments. Um, And and this film is just, like, filled with them. It's filled with these things that are, that are, that just burrow into, into your brain. And he, and I think it's because he executes on them, or everyone, the whole staff executes on them well enough to make these really broad brushstroke moments actually work. And that wraps around to, like, my my beef with Palpatine as a character a year plus ago was, why does he do this? What is his end? Um, and... What like to what end does he want to live it forever? Going back to you know what actually I was first thinking about it coming off of, uh, what's the fucking final movie called? Rise of Rise of Skywalker. I always want to say Rise of the Skywalker because both of these <laughs> other final trilogy movies have the in them. Rise of Skywalker, in which he wants to live forever again for some fucking reason, and it's not it's not clear. And I think part of the tension here is because the movies work really well at this epic genre scale where it's poetics and it's not particulars but it's abstract ideas bouncing into each other but and rendered materially um but the but it's also written by someone or made by 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 people who are are interested in the particulars who are interested in the like the trade federation (laughs) and the ways in which clones are designed and made and and programmed both literally and figuratively and all those those things and so i think there is a tension between the sort of um, the sort of abstract space of the fantasy epic and the political drama space that stuff like the Obi-Wan investigation arc in Attack of the Clones produces. Um, so that's part of where that tension comes from. But when fucking Palpatine's just in the middle of his arrest decides to just say power, unlimited power, <laughs> not in response to a question, really. He's not saying this is why I'm doing it. He just, he just says it. It just like comes out of him like lightning. Like he can't but say power, unlimited power. And this is why I tweeted the other day that that line is the, mo- everybody, everybody needs money. That's why they call it money line from heist. 
in which Danny DeVito, <laughs> so consumed by money, thinks the word money is inside of money. They're like, this is the only reality there could be. We call it money. It, it oozes money from the thing. And, and in that moment, it's like, oh, right, Palpatine, I can't think about Palpatine as a political actor. I have to think about him as the personification of, of avarice, greed, a desire for power. And when I think about him in that way, and when I think about this movie in that way, and when I think about the characters in this movie in that way, I one, I forgive a lot <laughs> because when I'm thinking about it as a political drama, and when I have to think about like the relationship between Natalie or between Padme and Anakin, <laughs> it gets rough. Uh, but when I think about it in this broader operatic sense, uh, so much stuff clicks clicks into place, and that's why I think the purest version of this you can watch is the AMV that I linked in our <laughs> chat, uh, Star Wars anime opening four prequel trilogy arc uh, that uses the drag or the, the Demon Slayer theme um, because I think anime openings also exist in this realm of poetics, this realm of broad brush strokes and high emotion you know, opera instead of needing to live up to the difficult task of telling a politically coherent like <laughs> narrative. Um, so that is my galaxy brain take about this movie. Uh, again, I had to just like, it's been in here. It's been boiling in here for days. <laughs> so thank you for letting me just empty my brain out. Oh man. That was like a fucked up crease in Austin's forehead. Yeah. And it's yeah. right here. Skin, uh -huh. like, has weird power. Uh -huh. Is eyes yellow now? <laughs> like, just for this shot. They'll, they'll disappear in the next <laughs> shot. Don't the worry. Vader, the Vaderfication is, is, yeah. is, is happening. I just went Vader mode. Finally. Vader mode is finally come.